oh. understand how this works. So I've been sitting here trying to poke all the buttons. I apologize. Good morning. No, it's okay. I, well, I so appreciate but, you taking the time pleasure. here to chat with us today. Everybody. We're so grateful. Thank you so much. Well, first of all, welcome back to Chicago. This is not your first rodeo here. You were recently here at the Lyric Opera right. last year, or two years ago now. Um, 2003, you were here with the Goodman. So welcome back. What are you excited um, about for being in Chicago? I'm excited about these audiences we've been having at the theater. They've been bonkers. Like, it's like, it's like, it feels like we're back in New York in a lot of ways. Um, we've had amazing audiences all across the country so far, but there's something hot about Chicago. People are, people are here are ready for Into the Woods, so we're having a blast. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to a nice restaurant on Monday that I'm excited about, that I've heard a lot about. Alinea, which apparently is very fancy, um, but I love food. I will literally wear the same outfit every day for two years, but um, I will drop coin on a good meal. So my buddy Jason Forbach and I are going, Rapunzel's Prince, the incredible Jason Forbach and I are going on Monday. So I cannot wait to go there. And we're going to do the architectural boat tour. And um, we went to Sidetracks on Monday and watched... Um, show tunes it was fun I, I love it here chicago's amazing oh, that's so fantastic well we have lots of questions that, that have come not to cover here so we'll well, hey thanks happy belated birthday your birthday what are you looking oh, forward to in this question. new year of um who do, do i get to know who asks these who asks these questions do you have names for people or are these just quick random questions that came in um, oh, I love it. Okay, I great. Question, so I love it. Um, <laughs> I, the biggest thing I'm looking forward to in this new year of life is walk on through this piece that I'm writing. I've been writing um, about art at the Metropolitan Museum of Art and my sort of observation of it through of my life and everything. That's going to be on, well, hopefully we're going to be doing a production this fall. Um, I'm doing a couple concerts. I'm doing a concert on Monday at City Winery. Um, and we're going to do a little chunk of the show there just to share it with Chicago audiences and then I'm also really looking forward to doing it again in LA, pieces of the show, and then hopefully a full production in the fall in New York. That's the biggest thing. I'm, I'm, I'm just really excited to create something and share it with everybody. Absolutely. Well, we are going to get to walk through because there have been a lot Amazing. of questions that have come in regarding that. Um, but one thing that you mentioned in one of the in in, in an interview you did recently was that you have a desire yeah. to do a little bit more teaching and i just listened to a bit a bit of your acceptance speech recently and how you thanked and credited yeah. university of michigan um for you know the work that that you are doing now and we have someone specifically let me see if i can find the name that asked would you ever want to go back yeah, for University sure. I, I, that's, that's sort of my life dream. I'm not quite ready yet because I have still have some things professionally I want to do. And in fairness to the students, I mean, sometimes it's okay to come in and out, but I feel like people want to, people want to, um, I don't know, I just want to be around and be with them um, more consistently. But yeah, I dream of doing that someday. I love teaching and um, learning from the students and trying to find ways to be a better performer and also a better communicator in the classroom. And I love, I love teaching. It's just like one of my, it's, I almost love it more than um, performing. I think I do love it more than performing. <laughs> yeah. What is one piece of advice that you would give college oh, age Gavin? Come out of the closet. I would, I would say get into your queerness quicker, more, Accept yourself and love yourself more. Um, I've spent too long afraid and ashamed and just just worried that it would affect my life in a negative way. And in so doing, that affected my life in a negative way. I just think there's such beauty in whoever you are, whatever you are, however you identify, whatever you believe, is to be kinder to myself, I would say. Yeah. I'm looking. I can't stop looking at myself. Um, I should have said, put makeup on or something. I literally took a shower and rocked in here, and I look like a. Hey, I look gorgeous. Forget it. Moving on. I'm gonna practice. I'm gonna practice that being nice you, to myself. <laughs> you you mentioned in an interview 
recently, something that really resonated with, with me, you said, I was sourcing too much of my worth externally on sources outside of myself, and I was not working <laughs> enough. It, it, um, I would love to know, you know, what, um, as, as, as you're going through that journey of working on yourself internally, what are some things that, that you've learned along the way? And specifically, have you, if you have advice for other creatives who yeah. are going through that same Gosh, challenge? Your questions are fantastic. Thank you for this. Um, cause it's the stuff I care about rather than like, I don't know how tight are those wolf pants? I don't know that's a stupid question, but like, I, I, I'm, I'm grateful for these questions and this one, especially because the pandemic was a nightmare for all of us. And I will stand, it was just terrible. I learned so much, oh, so many things about what was so bad about that have informed me on how to be better and, and like love my life more and be kinder to myself, like I said before. But I realized in doing, in losing, I lost a relationship shortly before the pandemic, but it was really difficult and you know hard. I lost my dog. My job, my voice, like my voice kind of left my body for a year and a half. Any way to perform, any way to do what I love doing. And I'll say all these things for anybody to feel sorry for me. So many people had it so much worse, but it's, it's, it's owning your experience as it is and allowing myself to feel instead of being like toxically positive, like you're going to be fine. It's okay. Look on the bright side. No, sometimes it's not actually helpful to be positive. It's helpful to sit next to myself internally and go, this is hard. What you're dealing with is hard. No matter how lucky, I'm, I'm literally one of the privileged people in this world. I have such a wonderful life and amazing people in it. But like I had to learn how to not source my worth from people clapping for me or people loving me or, or things achieving things or winning things or buying things you know it sounds so like of course gavin that's something you should know but i don't know about anybody else out there but it's not something i can really understand until i lived it and having it all when the pandemic happened which which happened for 99 percent of us out there everything was taken away our purpose job like this what i do was too much of my identity this this thing here this voice that I source so much of my worth from people saying, oh, you have such a beautiful voice. You're such a good singer. I thought they were saying, I love you. I love you. I love you. All they were saying was, you have a good voice. I love listening to you sing. Not that that's what makes you great. It's part of it maybe that people like, but so many other things to it. And I was sourced, long story short, too late. I was sourcing too much of that from approval, validation. And it's going to be my daily work for the rest of my life you know, to get away from the achieve and receive. If I achieve something and do well, then I will receive love and affirmation. It's, it's, uh, it's both things. It's, it, you need to have a balance of both, I think. Thank you for that question. That was a dream. Well, speaking of things that, that bring up, uh, I have to talk about walk on through. Um, you call it a, a theatrical concert, a concert call, and the Metropolitan Museum of Art commissioned you to create an work inspired by or in response to any number of works in yeah. the fine yeah. art Mecca's vast collection to talk about. But in the creation process, was there a specific piece of art that really stuck out to you and really The two that, that jumped to mind were I spent a lot of time in front of Carpo's Ugolino and his sons. If you don't know it, look it up online. I wish I had a link I could send you. It's this unbelievable sculpture that sits in the Petrie um, gallery with the sculpture gallery. It's this beautiful, it's like an atrium ceiling and brick walls and stunning, stunning uh, sculptures in there. But there's this, um, Jean-Baptiste Carpeau, I believe is the artist's name. And it's called Ugolino and his sons. And it's the story of a grandfather and father, this man, who his sons and grandsons are clinging to him as they're trapped atop a tower. And he has been forced, punished, forced to choose between either dying of starvation or, this is disgusting, or eating his children and grandchildren to survive. Um, he's chained to this stump and he's sitting there and they're all like in various states of like passing out. And it's the most unbelievable artistry. It literally looks like the hands and the skin 
you can see the depressions of the of the of his sons grabbing onto him yet you look at it and you go that's just rock that is literally unformed a mass of solid material that somebody sat there and chipped away and chipped away and worked and polished and thought and and it looks frighteningly lifelike and i just more even more than how beautiful the piece is and i just thought about the time that it took and and also how do you make motion and softness and tension in solid matter and just i was blown away by that so i i i think i'd stop there that's my favorite piece in the museum currently there's some other stuff i love but it's been taken away or moved to the a different part of the basement and restored or taken back to the person who owned it i just i didn't know anything about museums i i wasn't really in love with museums and i just spent like a year and a half walking writing listening thinking watching observing the people observing the shifting the changing of the museum and i had to sort of um out myself as a, in this piece as a person who doesn't really have that experience and that expertise but still has a place in in that space and it sort of was a mirror to my life like i don't really know where at this midlife point in my life where i fit or how it's supposed to work and i was like oh that's kind of how i feel in this building and in this experience and there's a space for me here there's a space for me in this world there's a space for me in chicago or charlotte or la or wherever we're, our show goes next you know i just i love i've had a really enjoyed my time and i cannot wait to share the show with the world well yes yeah. in chicago one day but we are to to see the trajectory of of this show what are specific ways that we as patrons of of the theater can support your your within, work within walk on through within into the woods we'll, we'll yes. start with walk on through and then i um, and into it honestly you can support me directly by checking out the website um my wonderful assistant Kayla Kuzbel is the woman who's built this website for me cuz i'm so bad at telling people about what i'm up to and and she's incredibly on it so there'll be information and updates on the website gamreel.com um if you can come see the show if you can get into the city winery i think we might be sold out but there's always tickets people cancel get ill um stop by the city winery on monday and i'll play some of the songs for you my two two of my musicians from the band are coming to to share their wonderful gifts Madeline Benson and Chris Peters um and then indirectly you can support me indirectly by going to your local theater to to um your local performance artist uh venue um supporting live music it 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 all feeds i'm an independent artist when it comes to that stuff until it's produced and and hopefully it gets to go all around the world um i would just say support people that you are interested in go and look and see what what creative energies are out there that you're inspired by and then go buy a 5 10 50 100 dollar ticket and go and support them because it's weirdly indirectly i feel that that support even if i have nothing to do with it because i see other artists with followings or people who are cheering them on that i've never heard of and i go ah oh, that's somebody who just had an idea and put it up in front of people and then and people watched listen there's like there's no art without people who care about it and so to fans supporters people are coming to see into the woods you cannot know what it means to walk out on that stage and hear you respond and hear you love what we're doing and then to walk out of the stage door and i'm i'm currently not signing or or taking pictures because we still have a a punitive sort of measure regarding covid around and i'm just trying to stay a little bit safer Cause until they lift that ban that we're not allowed to go to work if 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 there's a possibility of it. anyway i'm just trying to stay safe but it, you cannot know what it means to to walk out the stage door in chicago and see all these smiling faces and people cheering for what we do it means everything so thank you yeah um i don't tell you when we're at time but do you have go, a go. people want to come question? come back grateful to answer any more Well, we have to jump to into the woods. It really is such a phenomenal uh, show. I th- saw it this you. past Tuesday. You were so wonderful. Um, hi, I'm curious. Okay, so first, 
when you first said yes to Into the Woods, um, it was like um, a two week thing. It, it, it was a short stint and recently you said in, in how you've been saying no to a lot of projects so that you can make space for yeah. your show walk, walk on through. If you knew at the time it would, that Into the Woods would have grown to what it is today and been this much of a, a, a wonderful time commitment, but time commitment none To be honest with you, yet. I don't think I would have because I'm, I, I'm so committed now to trying to um, push this walk on through forward. And really, I've had an amazing career. I hope to continue to act and create and teach and, and embrace new opportunities. But I knew if I didn't carve out the space and the time to do this work, I would still be talking about it 20 years from now. And I was like, this is my moment to try to make it happen because the material demands a certain amount of my voice and my body that in 10 years, I don't know that I, I, hopefully I will have that stamina. So I knew now was the time. Lear to they called me and said, hey, I know this is a crazy question, but would you ever consider playing the wolf and the prince and in into the woods? And I knew Sarah, who's one of my best friends, was playing Baker's wife. And I thought, it's a week, it's two weeks rehearsal, it's 10 days rehearsal and two weeks of work. I need the health insurance weeks. We had we we are not health insurance because of the the crisis that happened to our industry. Never before in the history of our world has this happened. A year and a half where we haven't had work in that way. So I said yes. I don't know that I would have said yes if it was a long commitment because I would worry that it would have taken me away again from. But I was able to during I was able to go to the O'Neill Festival that summer. I got it written into my contract when we transferred to Broadway that they would let me out. They were so gracious. I was able to do an industry presentation of walk on through in December while I was still doing the show so I could write and prepare while I was doing the show. The Prince and the Wolf are, are they hurt my ankles and my back and you know it's hard work but like it's easier than other jobs where it would be really taxing so I can do both things at once and when I took the tour the reason I said yes to the tour was I knew that since our industry pre presentation of walk on through in December it would be at least six months that I probably would be able to get some something new going. So I thought that's the perfect slot. I'm not ready to be done with the show. I love this piece. Let's go see the country and let's spread the love. So long, long answer again, but yeah, I'm, I'm so glad it worked out the way it did, but also I just followed my gut. And that's my biggest advice is like, when you don't know what decision to make, close the door, get into a room by yourself, turn off the lights and listen to the voice within you that probably is like, I really want to do this, but I probably shouldn't you actually should. You should do the thing that you're, because even if it goes all upside down, you made the decision. You know, I made this decision and it's been unbelievable. These people I'm on stage with are magic. This, this production team, the, our producers are amazing. Our, our creative team's incredible. We are, we are doing something. Last night, we, Simone Rose, who's stepping in for Stephanie this week, while Stephanie's out ill, um, she had her 30th birthday birthday party and, we, and her theme was everybody had to dress up like they were um, senior citizens and I naturally went like this. Um, but like um, people were out just playing arcade games and dressed up silly and just socializing in such joy. There's so much joy in the company that I'm so happy to be with all these people. It's wonderful. It really is such a wonderful show. And for all those who are watching, come out. Come yeah, it's here until May, May 7th. only. Yeah, it's so wonderful. Um, yeah. To wrap us up, you mentioned you. Um, I'm 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 going to quote a little bit from the interview you recently did that was very. It, it just resonated with, resonated with me. Whenever I teach, I always go. This person you think you know, named Gavin Creel. I have no idea who he is. Inside my body, I know who that guy is, and he's not the person that people may see and think. Oh, he's won an award, or he's had a successful career. Now, Ford brought out a bunch of times. He must be, what did I say? Oh, sad. He must be sad. I said sad, because yes, sometimes he's very sad. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I was teaching a class this wonderful, we had a New Works Festival at my alma mater at University of Michigan. I had this group of 30 AMAP students, assigned male at birth students, who were standing in front of me, and we were in a moment of, what are we doing here? What are we trying to make? And I had a pile of songs that I was trying out for my next piece and just exploring possibilities. And they were standing in front of me and I could see that they, they were seeing somebody who they were nervous around or thought was fancy or something. 
and I can see it because they've been doing this business for 25 years. And I'm not Katy Perry or Lady Gaga or Hugh Jackman or anything like that kind of level of fame. But every once in a while, somebody recognizes me or knows who I am. And it's, it's quite, I never tire of it. It's always such a beautiful thing. <clears throat> um, but I will say, I was standing in front of them and I just remember thinking, who do you think you're looking at right now? Because I had a feeling that there was a disconnect of, I had the luxury of being 20 years older than those students, but I still feel like them. But they don't have the luxury at the age and the experience that they are of knowing what it's like to stand in my body. So they make me an other. And othering anybody sucks, but you don't ever think that your teachers need care as well. And it's something I'm really realizing the more I teach that it's a, it's a, it's a relationship between student and teacher that I had to just clarify with them the, the person that is made by the things that we think we want to achieve in the business that, that, that is created is a proper name of a person that I'm not making any sense is a proper name. It's a title of a person that I don't know. And then I'm like, I'm you, I, I'm, I'm just rambling. I'm trying to make sense of this. It's, I think it's clear. I, I just, I'm grateful for, for having had my education and all the experiences and pitfalls and rises that I have in my career. And at this point I stand now, I understand so much more what it's like to be um, misunderstood in the best, most beautiful way. But I just say to people, I do my best to uphold what you think that I am, but chances are I will disappoint you. <laughs> From, you know, one last so, um, small thing, but what what do you want people to know Real about Gavin Creel. Real Gavin Creel? It's silly Instagram handle. Um, about me, I, I would love people to know that I am trying. I'm trying to improve myself as a person, as a performer, always, but as a person. Um, and I'd like them to also understand that, uh, <laughs> this is reminding me of Beaches, the movie, when Bette Midler's character is watching an interview and eating beans, and she's like throwing the beans at the TV because she's watching with Victoria, the little, her, the, her friend's daughter. And she's like watching herself do an interview and she goes, don't say it, don't say it, uh. And she's talking to herself. I feel like, what is the real CC Bloom? CC Bloom is a deeply feeling person. She's deeply feeling, I just feel like I'm having that moment right now. If anybody's watched pieces, you know what I'm talking about. One of the greatest movies ever. I, I guess he's a guy who's trying and who wants to continue to evolve and always stay self-aware and ultimately passionate, but kind. He is messy, but he's kind. <laughs> he is good, to quote Sarah, yeah. Gavin, thank you so much for sharing your time and talents and being so vulnerable so with us. You're thank so grateful. So um, I wish I could see you all. I have to remind myself that there's like about 100 people <laughs> pretend that they're sitting in a room and I can, I, this is neat, but I just love being alive. I love, love being in a live experience so much. And so we'll pretend this is that. I appreciate it so much. Um, for all those who are watching, come on down. Come see Into the Woods until May 7th at the Nederlander Theater at, at James Nederlander Theater. Tickets are available. Broadwayinchicago.com. We have $50 lottery, $49 rush. Come out, come see this wonderful company. Um, and support Gavin in his work with our Walk On Through. And we Thank you. To see where, where, where that show goes. Uh, and Gavin does have a show uh, at City Winery in two Mondays. Which yes! Is, oh, I can't, I, can't wait. I can't so I'm very excited. So wonderful. Um, but all for tuning in and sharing this conversation with us. Gavin, we're so grateful. Thank you. Um, Thanks, everybody. Thanks so much. Chicago.